What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you probably the funnest build that I've had in all of season four right now. I've played four classes out of the five. We're getting ready to go to Druid here soon, but I am just obsessed with Heart Seeker Rogue or or Victimized Heart Seeker Rogue or just Victimized Rogue. This build is 100% insane and the most fun I've had the entire season. So today I'm bringing you the build guide for it. I'm going to go over all the skills, the gear, the Paragon, and we're just going to showcase a pit tier 90. I'm not strong enough to consistently do 100 yet. I've done 95. So I think the highest I've got to on this build is 98 right now. I still need to like tweak just a few things then i still need to upgrade some gear but we can comfortably farm tier 90s in the pit i almost said gr 90s so let's go ahead and get over this build i love these basic attack builds and i'm gonna give you a lot of options here so let's get into the skill tree so this is a basic attack build guys we are doing heart seeker all right we're doing high heart seeker all the way into primary heart seeker so that it ricochets dealing 75 percent of its original damage now, the reason that we're doing Heartseeker is because of the huge lucky hit chance that this, that this attack has. Not only that, is that when we critically strike, we gain increased attack speed, and then you double the amount if the enemy is vulnerable. Now, I do want to make a quick disclaimer about this build before anybody gets crazy. I know this build has been going around, but I'm just now playing it. tomorrow. I think the day after, guys, we finally got the Bash build. Shout out to Rob. And... This build is like purely a lucky hit chance build plus vulnerable build. So when we're about to go over the gear and some of these skill choices, you're going to see why we do that. So Heartseeker, huge lucky hit chance, 73%. Um, now we're going to go down. We got Sturdy for damage reduction at close. Siphoning Strikes to help give us some more life when we um, critically strike close enemies, which is huge. We got one point into Stutter Step just to get a little bit more speed. We're going to come down and grab a Shadow Step into Discipline Shadow Step. This is just, this is literally just for our only way to become unstoppable, really. I am going to give you a second option to become unstoppable, but this is our main uh, main way to become unstoppable is Shadow Step. So we don't really use this skill too much, but it is nice. Next, we got, we max out Weapon Master, of course, because we're using bows. So we get increased damage to vulner, uh, vulnerable enemies. We're doing Caltrops, huge for the build, guys, into discipline caltrops this is going to give us critical strike and more importantly it's going to give us 64 percent multiplicative damage against enemies in our caltrops super easy no brainer uh this is kind of like a trap build as well concussive after knocking back or knocking down an enemy you gain increased crit strike chance try attacks when you quickly strike a dazed enemy they are knocked down we got dash of course into enhanced dash and then now we're going to come down here. Now we got some options, but let me go over the main stuff first. Dark Shroud, you want as many points in this as possible into countering Dark Shroud to get as much critical strike chance as you need, as well as a lot of damage reduction, okay? We got 12.8% damage reduction per active shadow. We end up getting five, so that's a huge amount of damage reduction. Uh, we got three points into Agile. Using a cooldown reduces, uh, increases our dodge chance by 12%, huge. Uh, we max out exploit as well as malice we are going to talk about an amulet that i'm still looking for the quest for this amulet is insane but you want to get an amulet that has both of these okay next we got smoke grenade into countering smoke grenade on a lucky hit enemies affected by smoke grenade have a chance to reduce its cooldown by one or by three if the enemy is vulnerable this is our way to um just deal more damage right so enemies affected by a smoke grenade have 25 percent multiplicative damage from us okay we don't really need the subverting okay i mean it is kind of nice the days and longer but we really don't need it we just want to be chucking out grenades as much as possible now here's the other option i'm running poison trap into enhanced poison trap poison traps knock down enemies for 1.5 seconds when it activates I really like this. This is very, very good. One, to not only knock down enemies so we get more damage with our tri attacks and stuff, or the critically strike, uh, but second, it adds another piece of CC, which helps us very much against boss. The poison damage is, you know, it's whatever, but this is really nice. We can just drop these down. It's a little bit more 
like crowd control or CC against enemies and mobs and elites. So I really like this. However, you can also run concealment. Concealment gives you move speed, you become unstoppable, and you get stealth for five seconds. Now, if you want to put points into this, I would go all the way up to subverting. A skill that breaks concealment always makes the enemy vulnerable for six seconds. It's kind of nice. You, you could do countering as well for the crit, but subverting, we want to make it enemies as vulnerable as much as possible. However, I've been really digging poison traps, so I'm going to stick with this for now, but that is a very strong option, guys. Next, we're going to skip this board. I'm just kidding. We're doing three points into Frigid Finesse. We are going to be freezing enemies like crazy, okay? So 30% multiplicative damage against frozen enemies. Next, we have no ultimate, but we are going to take one point into Adrenaline Rush, which is irrelevant for the energy regen because we're a basic attack build. But we needed to get to haste for increased move speed and increased attack speed that we will never have, but we get the increased move speed. Next, our key passive and the thing that makes this build work. That is Victimize. So on a lucky hit, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 50% chance to cause an explosion dealing 350 percent of its original damage to them and all around them when we go into the pit you're going to see those explosions so it does that victimizes damage is increased by 120 percent of our vulnerable damage bonus mine currently is 1454 percent absolutely insane this is where all of our damage comes from it is completely busted now as far as our specialization we're taking inner sight we don't really need combo points um, although combo points could be cool, but this is really, really nice for the crit chance. So we're going to be able to keep continuously spam. The crit chance is just huge. However, combo points you could try. I just think that inner sight is just better because we're not going to be able to put combo points in anything, right? Like we don't have a core skill. So just run inner sight. You're going to be much happier uh, into our gear. Now, this is more of a high end gear piece because of the Shaco. However, if you don't have Shaco, you can run a helmet similar to this with Dex, Max Life, and then you're gonna want cooldown reduction. Not Shadow Resistance, you want cooldown reduction. All right, but if you have Shaco, Shaco is the best in slot. Uh, next, we're doing Umbrus here on our chest piece for the lucky hit chance to give us a free Dark Shroud. That's why you do not see Dark Shroud on our bar because Umbrus is gonna give it that us for free. Okay, so in here, you're gonna want ranks to Dark Shroud. This is very important. For more damage reduction and here is where on our gear pieces where we want lucky hit lucky hit chance to freeze enemies for two seconds huge we need that however we are going to split some of these up in our gloves we're doing concussive strike all right again i got the lucky hit chance to freeze but you want attack speed vulnerable and lucky hit you want as much vulnerable damage as possible damaging an enemy has a chance to daze them and we deal increased damage to daze enemies this also applies to when you stagger a boss in our pants, this is the most important piece of the build. In your pants, you have to have plus to heart seeker. It's very tough to get this. It's kind of hard, but you need plus three to heart seeker. All right. And then you hope I, I haven't put this up to a yet because I got to reroll it. You want to get addition ranks into heart seeker so you can do as much damage as possible. Again, on the lucky hit here, I got slow. Ideally, you want to have one, two, three freeze. And then have one be a stun or like a daze. But we got slow, so it is what it is. On our boots, we are doing frostbitten. All right. And we have the lucky hit chance to freeze. You want move speed, max life, all res. Because rogues have an issue trying to get all res. So all res here and all res on our pants help us max our resistances. Okay. Now I'm doing frostbitten here. I really think this is awesome. Enemies hit by our grenade skills have a chance to equal or have a chance equal to critic to your critical strike chance to be frozen so this just helps us freeze them which is cool but more importantly we deal 25 percent multiplicative increased crit strike damage against frozen or stunned enemies which is why on here we would want the stun instead of slow now if you do not want frostbitten this is okay you can run where is it uh where is it you can run shared misery which is what i have on my pants when you hit a crowd control enemy there's a chance for that crowd control effect to spread now before you guys go crazy in the comments yes i used to have undying on here but i don't have it anymore 
Okay, Undying is absolutely OP. If you want to run Undying, what I would suggest is that you put Shared Misery in the boots and Undying on your pants, and you're good to go. However, with the testing that I've been doing, this combo of Frostbitten as well as Shared Misery is really nice. But if you have to pick one to go, get rid of Frostbitten. Just do keep Shared Misery because the spread is just too good with all the freezing we're doing. Next on our bow, Moonrise, of course. We're going to get that increased damage and attack speed, all that good stuff. Or, excuse me, move speed. Oh, yeah, attack speed, move speed, and damage. Uh, you want dex, vulnerable. I have damage on here and vulnerable. Chance for heart seeker to split. On our dagger, we got intercom because intercom's awesome now. 10% multiplicative, super good. Rapid for more attack speed. Uh, in here, we want edge masters here on because this is always going to be up. 20% is insane. Retribution is really, really good. Distant enemies have a chance to be stunned, but we deal increased 30% damage to stunned or knocked enemies, which is why on our boots, we got the frozen, but we need to redo our pants. I have a two-piece pants here. I also have a three-piece pants here. However, I would have to sacrifice life because we 100% or the, um, the armor, uh, we would swap armor here because we have to have all res. Otherwise, we don't cap. So I, I could lose the little bit of life there and then have more decks, which is what I might do and have the chance to get a uh, stun here, which would be really, really good. On our amulet, which is the one I'm looking for, guys, we're still on the lookout if anybody has one. It would be awesome. But right here, you want lucky hit chance plus to malice and you want plus to exploit. Okay? You want plus to malice and plus to exploit on your amulet. It is very hard to get. I have not found one. And then the third one, you want lucky hit chance, vulnerable dodge chance. And then, of course, on here, we got adaptability for um, at above. We get 120% multiplicative damage. Um, we do have um, gems in here, diamonds to help cap us. So, yeah. And then, of course, emeralds in the, or excuse me, um, what are these? What are those? I don't even remember what those are. Amethysts? I think those are amethysts. Uh, no, Sapphires. We got Sapphires in here for the increased vulnerability damage. So that is the build, guys. Let's go over Paragon quickly. Again, this is all going to be linked down in the description below on our Mobilytics profile, but I'm going to go over just what we have. We got Ambush for more damage. We got Chip for even more damage. We got Control for damage against the crowd. Uh, we got Exploit, of course, for vulnerability damage, which is also another way <clears throat> that we be make enemies vulnerable. In addition to that, guys, on our ring here, you have to have one of your rings that have lucky hit, chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds to help counteract our exploit, okay? Uh, next, we got Pride for more damage, and then we got Ranger for even more damage, okay? This build has been fantastic. I could get more life. We're capped on armor, and we have 40k attack power. So let's go ahead and do this run so i can showcase this to you guys hopefully we get a really good 90 if not i'll just bring a good one in but here we go let's pop a 90. um as far as potions you want to do the um elixir of advantage too you get increased attack speed and lucky hit uh, if you don't want to run that you could do elixir of fortitude if you do that our life goes to 42 um, 000. but i really like the uh increased attack speed and lucky hit but i'm gonna run it with the life this time just to kind of showcase when we don't have this potion active just for everybody, we have a 66% increase uh, lucky hit chance. So let's go ahead and rock this 90. We could have more life. I just did not grab the uh, other elixir. We could actually grab that right now. Maybe I can make it. Quest elixir, sweet. So you can pop the quest elixir as well. And now we go to 50k life. Let's have some fun on this. I've been so excited playing this build. It is so fun to CC. You're very fast. And you're destroying everything with a basic attack skill. I mean, come on, guys. It's super good. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. Hopefully, we get a good one here. So, with this build, you're just going to attack, right? You can throw your stuff. You want to Caltrop as much as you can, okay? It really helps. Um, you can drop poison traps as much as you want. You can have four up at any one time. But you can see, like, how much we're dazing. And how much we, like, freeze. The build is just... It's just so good, man. Drop Caltrops. Remember to throw your grenades as much as you can. 
I would say, like, again, you want you want the three times chance to freeze, which is super good. And then you want that just that one extra time to stun. Just that one extra time to stun. Now, the bane of our existence here is, like, getting probably the close-up fire guys or, like, getting a lot of damage reduction, which always seems to be, like, yeah, they, like, there goes a the fire guy, right? You want the freeze? Get out of my face. Super annoying. See, here we go with the damage reduction, guys. We got to kill those as fast as we can. Explode them. Uh, you guys let me know down in the chat as well. If you guys are having... Like, do you guys see a lot of damage reduction in here when you're just farming? You also kind of want to have this as, like, an elite hunter. Almost. You kind of just want to run from pack to pack in a way. Save your caltrops and all your stuff for the, uh, you know, the the elite packs. Otherwise, you can just kind of run through. You just want to kind of group them up. Just let the crowd control do its thing. And you guys can see, too, that even without undying, like, we're fine. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're more than fine. Even without undying. Everything's vulnerable. We do crazy damage. I've been having so much fun with this build. Again, you got to kill the damage reduction dudes. They're super annoying. Now, we end up getting through here in about like four or five minutes because I don't have the best of the best gear. But I am working on that. I have been thoroughly enjoying the grind as far as like... Um, like grinding for like the resources for the gear. And it does seem a little harsh. The the amount that you, that you kind of get... Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'll grab that protection. Um, like, how much you actually get. But once you have a build like this, or, like, if you're playing Bash Barb, like, I literally made a Bash Barb just to, just to farm this. I gotta get rid of those damage reduction guys, man. Once you get rid of the damage reduction guys, it's... It's pretty easy after that. Boy, thank God I came into that protection shrine, huh? But yeah, I literally made bash, guys, just to... Just to, like, speed farm, like, T100s. Which is super cool, but... Um, I've been having so much fun with Heartseeker. You can see we're probably, like, we're almost at five minutes. Now, I know you can speed farm these, um, like, much faster if you have, like, all level 8 gear or all level 12 gear. You can end up speed farming, like, uh, T100s in, like, 3 or 4 minutes, which is absolutely insane. Which is good. I'm not quite there yet. I'm still trying to level up gear. But that's okay, man. Plus, I will tell you guys that, like, the pain of... Uh, the pain of, like, re-rolling master working, undoing, and re-rolling is rough, man. All right, here are the boss. We want to stay on the boss as much as we can. Um, we want to CC him as quickly as we can. I hate these bosses, man. These bosses suck. CC him. Hit him with absolutely everything. We do very good damage. Uh, he ran. We got to get that CC again. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Dodge it all. We got to dodge all the Lilith stuff because that's... Because that's crazy. And then we should... We should get the kill here. You can see, man. The build is just super strong. The build is so good. I know that was a little bit longer run, guys. I'm still getting used to the build. But, wow, man. Uh, this build is just absolutely fantastic. I love it so much. Um, again, you have a lot of options here. But I've been thoroughly enjoying it. The extra knockdown is just so good, guys. So... 
Um, one last addition in the gear here. You can run swords if you want for extra crit strike damage. But because we're so close, I find that the daggers are just better. Again, you could also probably run a crossbow. I think I personally would want to run a crossbow instead of the bow. Because the damage to distance, we just don't get. Right? Like, we, we get it against, the, like, the ads as we're running through. But against, like, the elites and stuff when we're close, I'd rather just have the extra vulnerable damage on the crossbow. So I'm still trying to get a good crossbow here uh, with some greater affixes. This one is just so good right now. But, yeah, guys, Heartseeker, Victimized Rogue, however you want to call it. This build is just so fun, man. Like the video, guys. Let's get this over 100-plus likes. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe, as always. Stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.